So um, on the subject of like design and mm -hmm. when you, uh, uh, like, let's say you're, you know, you're in the kitchen design world or even we yeah. talk about like bathrooms and, or how do you approach uh, the, all the elements I know you talked about you start with the functional aspect mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Um, so do you see tile um, falling in on the later stages or does tile somehow play into the functional aspect of it? So a good mm -hmm. example, sometimes people say like, I don't want the floor slippery. Mm -hmm. And that can be a functional design yeah. element yeah. In that, that kind of plays into it, right? Or like mm -hmm. they're worried about um you know how clean how easy it is to keep a backsplash clean or you know right. different things clean yeah. like where where do you normally fit in uh the tile selection process and then um how do you what do you have like a process in terms of how you help people select tile mm -hmm. in for their space so um right now i work with a company called aya kitchens right so mm -hmm. we are mainly a, a kitchen manufacturer just, just to put it in perspective okay so the the process for process for let's say the designer or the decorator mm -hmm. um is they they determine needs right um and then they look at the space um and they don't necessarily so let me start with the, the de designer or decorator's role. So they'll mm -hmm. go in, talk to the client and say, okay, what do you need? What do we want it to look like or feel like, right? right. They create a mood board. Um, and then from there, they start to narrow things down for the client, right? So it's the, right at the get-go, they start with selections, right? So then um, the those things that the client want, right? Like, I don't want it to be slippery. I'm afraid of, of falling because that. I've got an older parent that lives with us, yeah. that kind of thing, right? Um, that all starts when they gather the information from the client, mm -hmm. and then they start to narrow things down. The The selection for the designer at that point then is, um, okay, this is the look that I want to achieve. Here are the, the general, you know, kind of, this is what I want it to look like. So then they come to the the they come to their suppliers now to say, what do you have that will achieve this look? And where do you, where do you, how do you, first of all, come up with that general schematic of what, like, how, where is that coming from? Is it, is it a, some picture on the internet or is it, are they writing things down or, you know, mm -hmm. how, how are they giving you a, at least a preliminary vision of, of what they want? The, they, they, for the most part, most designers or decorators start with a, they have their own, uh, or they should have their own um, customer questionnaire to go right. through. Okay. Right. And that, that talks about uh, who uses a space that basically your five W's, your who, what, when, where, why. Right. Like who's using the space? Uh, what spaces are we talking about? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, how do you use the space? Uh, when do you want this completed? And so mm -hmm. on. What type of budget are you working with? And so on. So they mm -hmm. they try to get uh, an overall scope of the project. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, they start to talk about looks and feeling, right? And say, okay, how do you want the space to feel? Uh, do you have inspiration photos? Do you have a a Pinterest board, right? Yeah. And then they start to help the client to um, curate it so that it becomes a smaller and smaller, you know, selection. And they're able to pin down um, what they want, what they right. want it to look, right? Uh, I always joke with them to say, sometime in the future, we're going to be able to put on these headsets and say, okay, this is what I want for my space. <laughs> and then just like... <laughs> Just, <laughs> yes. Well, I think Elon Musk is working on that right now. Oh, yeah, neural link or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be first in line there to <laughs> or, hook it up. Yeah. Okay. This is what That's I want, funny. Kathy. There you go. Oh, my uh, God. But I tell them until then, you have to, to be, you have to be that neural link. Like you have yeah. to really listen like, so we talk about active listening and we talk about yes. body language and say you know if your client says mm, it's okay and they start leaning back then you're not hitting it yeah you know, it's that warmer warmer cooler you know you're, yeah. you're kind of playing that game with the client to say okay i'm getting it this is it and and so um from there they they come up with a, a mood board right and mm -hmm. the mood board 
um, should capture, um, and I always have this dilemma with students is because you're trying to understand concept and mood and you know that kind of thing. But mood board should capture that feeling, right? That thing where they say, I want to feel ah, like this, right? Okay, right. how do you uh -huh. put that on a mood board? How do you, right? And so, so just putting it together and it doesn't have to be, the challenge of the mood board is that you can put, if you put in uh, a photo, let's say from HGTV or, or Architectural Digest and they fall in love with that photo and you can't achieve it, you're, you're screwed, you're in trouble. Right. right. Um, so it, it should be conceptual. It should be uh, something that can pull everything together. And once, you, once you're able to do that, um, then it can guide all your decision making. Mm -hmm. right? And I always tell them a good mood board will allow you to to streamline your decision making process.